In those places, I perform my clinical practice. So when we have a patient with irreparable rotator cuff uh, tear in the functional shoulder, there are many options of the treatment. So we have conservative treatment, bicep tenotomy, and we, we have a subacromial balloon. This technique was introduced in 2012. It's a, a spacer that's made of polymer and is insufflating with normal saline. There are three sizes, large, medium, and small, and the spacer degrades over 12 months. So this technique uh, have, uh, has some benefits. So the first benefit is the biomechanic benefit. The balloon restores the glenohumeral contact pressure, allows the depression of the humeral head, increases the delta load, and for that reason, restores the concavity compression of the glenohumeral joint, allows the compensated functional shoulder motion with minimal pain. So how about the clinical outcome of this procedure? There are some paper published about that. Uh, this, published, uh, this, this paper is published in 2018. And uh, the, the, the follow-up of this procedure in this paper was three years. And they reported 46 shoulder, and the result was reduction of the pain scale in three points. The Oxford shoulder score from 21 to 44 points, and a high percentage of patients are satisfied postoperatively. There are another publication about this uh, procedure. So they reported 26 patients, follow up was five years, and the results show statistically significant improvement in pain up to five years post implantation. And the functional measured by the Oxford shoulder score and short form 12 score showed improvement up to two years post, uh, post implantation. Uh, in addition, there are some meta-analysis meta of these implants. This meta-analysis included 10 studies, 261 patients. And the conclusion of this meta-analysis was the technique achieves satisfactory outcomes when we talk about the constant score, ASIN, range of motion, pain, and another, uh, of another uh, measures between three months and three years of follow-ups. Nevertheless, uh, this is the systematic review published in 2021, and they concluded uh, there is not a strong evidence available. So another benefit is uh, maybe is there any cost effectiveness? So there are some uh, publications about that, this paper uh, was published by Alessandro Castagna in 2019, and they compared uh, different technique of the irreparable rotator cuff, ter, r r r irreparable rotator cuff ter, such as uh, subacromial balloon, partial repair, uh, reverse shoulder arthroplasty, and conservative treatment. So they analyzed in terms of the cost per quality adjusted last year's gain, and they uh, and 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 their conclusion was the subacromial balloon is more cost effective than the partial repair and reverse shoulder arthroplasty. The conservative treatment is the least cost costly management strategy, and maybe that a subacromial balloon is safe and cost effective. Another advantage of this procedure, we can use in a medically debilitated population. The procedure, the procedure can also be done under local anesthesia with fluoroscopic or ultrasound. Consequently, we don't, we don't uh, require any general anesthesia. Nevertheless, the main question of this procedure is who could it work on? It's really important to choose the ideal patient when, when we use this technique. Good outcomes and predicated on proper patients when we select uh, the, the proper uh, way. So what could be the ideal indication? Firstly, elderly patient, lower functional demand, active forward elevation over 19 degrees, uh, Third is minor intact, subscapula intact, and finally, they uh, doesn't have uh, osteoarthritis, or maybe they have minimal osteoarthritis. So I show you some cases about this technique. 
Uh, this is a 60 years old patient, housekeeper. She had to fail arthroscopy rotator cuff repair. During the physical examination and MRI, we found subscapular and teres minor intact. And this is X-ray of the shoulder of this patient. We, uh, we see uh, minimal osteoarthritis. This is the active forward elevation over 90 degrees. And she had weakness and pain, as we can see in the video. So in this case, we proposed uh, SWAG subacromial balloon. We started the standard arthroscopic. We don't see any rotator cuff. So we, after that, we performed the subacromial debridement, and this is the setup of the balloon. So we started to implant the balloon, and uh, we, the, the cannula of the balloon enter in the shoulder and we should see the black line, the proximal side of the cannula. As we can see in the video, this is the black line. And this, this line is relation to the greater tuberosity. Then I, the balloon was insufflated with 25 millimeters of the normal saline. And after that, this is the final result of the, of the balloon. We created a new space between the chromial and the humeral head. This is the result. This is the follow up at one month. She had full range of motion with minimal pain. And she recovered sun strength of the shoulder. This is another case, a female, 69 years old, housekeeper, active forward elevation over 90 degrees. And during the physical examination, MRI, the subscapular and teres minor intact. This is the MRI of, of this patient. Uh, and we uh, found minimal osteoarthritis. So we proposed the same technique, and this is the follow-up at four months. She, she had full range of motion with minimal pain, so, so, so to sum up, uh, the, the subacromial balloon could have biomechanic benefits, uh, could get good, up, or good clinical outcomes, and could be cost effective. And maybe this uh, implant could use in the medically debilitated patient. Nevertheless, the key of this implant is the selection of the proper patient. Further higher quality studies are needed to direct the best use of this implant. Thank you.